to if depends. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Um, we're just going to wait for maybe a minute more. Um, then we can get started. Um, I just want to be very thankful that you all are here. And hopefully, you all get something out of this workshop. You put in a lot of effort and time. Um, and this is the first of many workshops that we're going to host. Um, so have a good time. Follow along. And um, you could have chat GPT with you. I'm pretty sure all of you do have ChatGPT, so that shouldn't be a problem. Um, if you have ChatGPT4, that's even better. ChatGPT4 is a paid version of ChatGPT. You could even have Google Art. There's an application called DAL-E, which is uh, a text to image converting AI model. Um, so you write text in it and it converts it to images. You could have applications like that. 
or you could have any of AI applications on your own. Um, there's literally hundreds of AI applications and a lot of them might be applicable to what you're trying to do today. I'm gonna to start in a minute. All right, without further ado, we're gonna get started. Welcome everybody to Exploring AI Frontiers, a first of its kind workshop and the first workshop that Bruin AI has ever hosted. During this workshop, we'll be, we're gonna be talking about various things. We're gonna go over AI applications, prompt engineering, different plugins if you know what plugins are, but we're gonna explain that to you. Um, the impact of AI on all of our lives and everything in between. Bruin AI is a brand new club, and I just want to thank all of you for being here. We're really passionate about what we're doing throughout the club. The vibe that we want to set and the tone that we want to set for this club is really prestigious. We want to focus on everything AI. We want to build a community out of anybody who joins our club um, and make it treated more like a product than a club. We don't want to treat it just like a startup. Um, we've been focused. We're really passionate individuals who are focusing on this, and hopefully you get something out of this workshop. Next slide. All right, um, so without um, talking a lot, we're gonna give you a workshop overview of what we're gonna go over. There's multiple things. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, so first of all, we're gonna go over the introduction of what Bruin AI is. We want to make sure that you understand what Bruin AI is trying to do. It's a brand new club. Um, I know it's the end of spring quarter, so a lot of us are ready to go back home. Summer is close by, but we wanted to get a head start before fall. We wanted to recruit a lot of people. We are looking for really passionate individuals to join us on our mission. And so we want to introduce you to what we actually do. Next, we're going to be talking about the impacts of artificial intelligence. Since the start of 2023, we all know artificial intelligence hit us like a truck. I did not hear about AI this much ever in my life, as much as I've heard it in the past few months. And so artificial intelligence has a big impact on our lives and we wanna go over what that impact is. Finally, the hands-on part of the workshop is prompt engineering. Now, for those of you who don't know what prompt engineering is, it is a new kind of engineering. There's a lot of money involved in this engineering. And it's basically what prompt or what input can you give to an AI model like ChatGPT and get the best output possible. So there are specific inputs and specific ways that you can talk to an AI model like ChatGPT and make sure that the result is best and the result is most efficient. Now, this field is a very growing field. And so we'll go over prompt engineering with all of you um, we'll go over what it is and how you can use different methods to leverage prompt engineering in your industry, which brings us to the next part of the workshop. The next part of the workshop, we'll be focusing on industry applications, how you can apply the basics of prompt engineering in your industry so that you can become a better professional and a better person. Prompt engineering and AI is such a big part of our lives now, and we'll be going over professional and personal ways that you can leverage this, this new skill that is there to lead your industry. Finally, in the end, we're gonna go over future involvement, how you can involve yourself in a rapidly growing club like Bruin AI. Bruin AI, within seven days of launching, reached hundreds of people, and we're hoping to reach thousands of more. So if you're passionate about something like that, we're gonna be talking about that towards the end of the workshop. And then we're gonna to talk to you uh, about team introductions. 
who are the people who are working behind this to make this dream come alive? So hi, everybody. I'm Akshay Singh. I'm the co-founder and president of Bruin AI. I'm a second year cognitive science major. I've been really passionate about involving different technologies into my life to make my life more efficient, personally, as well as professionally. In the past, I've worked on multiple startups. I've worked on a lot of clubs at UCLA. Um, I used to be an environmental science major, and then I changed to Coxi. Um, but I have basically worked on a lot of products. Um, not a big, big coding guy, but I, um, I do like to work on the front end and back end development side um, along with a bunch of coders. Um, so I'm looking forward to this workshop. <clears throat> All right. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Jacob Ramos. Uh, I'm the co-founder and vice president, and I'm a third year philosophy major. Um, some of the things that I specialize in academically include the philosophy of mind, language, theory of knowledge, and I really think all three of these combine to create a very good philosophical perspective on what AI is. So one of the things that I'm most passionate about is thinking about AI from a philosophical context in a sense of how is it gonna impact society? Uh, how are our lives gonna change as a result? And some of the things that I've done in the past in terms of AI applications includes things like, um, recently I won a pitch competition uh, for Bruin Entrepreneurs, which involved an AI system that um, recommended new travel locations based on previous travel experiences as well as personal interests. And this summer, I'm also going to be um, involving myself at UC San Diego at the Data Science Center there, um, where I'll be participating in a lot of AI ethics research. Um, I'll be doing a lot of AI ethics and society applications and group projects, as well as getting into a lot of data science related, um, AI related stuff. So I'm very happy to be here. Hello, everyone. Oh. Everyone can hear me fine. Thank you for joining us on Zoom call today. My name is Jim and I am the design director for an AI. The design for my see all aspects, design and branding for us. And with a background in UI UX design, I bring a wealth of experience to the table. My focus is not only on creating visually appealing designs, but also on enhancing user experience, ensuring and intuitive, engaging, and most importantly, user-friendly. I'm delighted to say that I've had the privilege of crafting our presentation that we'll be going through today. From concept to execution, I've put my creativity and expertise into every slide, striving to make it engaging, informative, and visually captive. In addition to my role in design and branding, I will also be collaborating very closely with the marketing team which means that I will be involved in various marketing initiatives, helping to promote Bruin AI and create a strong and memorable experience for our club and the community. I'm also very passionate about creating visually and impactful designs that effectively communicate our club's message and values. And through my work, I aim to enhance our brand identity, ensure that our visuals align with the innovative and forward-thinking nature of Bruin AI. So without further ado, let's dive into the presentation and I hope you find it very informative and inspiring. Thank you for your time, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the presentation. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Um, so I want to really quickly dive into what brought Bruin AI into action, um, what prompted us to think about this gap that we wanted to fulfill. Um, so we'll go into the next slide. Um, the biggest thing that we saw is that UCLA has a lot of AI-focused researches. They have a lot of people who construct AI, um, but there is quite literally no club that offers practical application of AI in everyday life. Now, if you think about it, there are hundreds of applications out there and none of us know about all of these innovations. Like I said, they're growing at a rapid rate that no one is able to take, uh, take account of and no one is able to keep track of. And all of these AI applications can be built, but as long as we don't make sure that we apply all of this to our own life, it doesn't make sense. And so that's how Bruin AI came to life. We thought of connecting a lot of people who are passionate about applying AI into their fields, who are efficiently going to make their professional and personal lives better. And we brought it to UCLA. One analogy, that I really like to draw here is that there are two parts of this. One are the people 
who actually make a Lamborghini and there are people who actually drive it. Now, which segment do you want to be in? We are the part which focuses on knowing how to drive this Lamborghini. And I want to take you over a few stats that we have to back this up. Now, all of you filled the RSVP, RSVP form and we had a bunch of questions there to understand your knowledge about AI. And almost 75% of you, as you can see, C4 and 5 um, are the people who didn't know enough about AI. And almost the bulk of everybody who answered these questions said that they don't know enough about harnessing the power of AI and they don't know uh, AI enough to apply them into their lives. So that's a huge number. Now to contrast this, almost 97% of everybody who answered the next question said that they think AI can optimize their fields and they think AI has the potential to revolutionize their lives. Now, if you think about it, this is the gap that we're trying to fulfill. There are people who think that AI might improve their lives and there are people who don't know how this can happen. And this is the bridge that we're trying to make. All right, so thank you, Akshay. So in honor of that, um, this is Bruin AI. So Bruin AI essentially acts as the one-stop destination for everything that involves AI. So we wanna do so many different things with this club, but narrowing it down, we wanna create a very vibrant AI community that allows not just for networking events, but also making new friends along the way. Um, we also believe that having a very diverse team that is able to contrast and help everybody coming from all sorts of different majors from different parts of campus, can really help create an AI environment where people can thrive, create new ideas, have whole new, um, uh, create new technical, non-technical opportunities. So we're gonna be offering a lot of different stuff, including um, technical projects that people are going to be working on every quarter. Um, we want people to create AI-based technical projects that are kind of gonna act as a portfolio for this, um, for this club. But on top of that, we're also gonna be offering non-technical opportunities. So we really wanna create not just um, technical applications of AI, but non-technical, where we're going to be offering a lot of different uh, ethical discussions, debates around AI, how it's going to impact our society, what we should do about it, as well as figuring out, you know, papers to write on what are the most important things we could do to, for example, stop AI from going the wrong direction, or figure out what are the best ways that AI could help in each individual sector of our lives. So these are things that we find to really be important, but we want to emphasize here that the most important thing that we want to do is create a community of people who are really passionate about AI. That way we can all build projects and share them together while having a lot of fun along the way. So just a couple statistics um, based on AI. So we see um, a lot of the time that 23% of customer service companies are now using AI. And this is just over the past year. Um, over at IBM, IBM said that 49% of employees working at companies want to be trained on how to use AI. Um, upwards of 80% of all physical work is estimated to be um, done through a combination of AI and big data, or at least it's capable of it, according to Forbes. And one of the most impressive things that we've seen is the um, bar exam in particular, and as well as other exams such as the MCAT and the GMAT, where we've seen that it took lawyers, for example, 96 minutes to complete the bar exam, whereas ChatGPT ended up taking 26 seconds. Lawyers scored an 85%, while ChatGPT ended up getting a 95%. So this is just a really great example of how far AI is really coming and how fast this wave of technology is coming at us at such a rapid rate. So what in terms of, um, so what exactly can we achieve with AI? So there's a couple things that I would like to start with. Um, I would like to start ideally with two analogies. So the first analogy that I'd like to say is the invention of telephones. So I believe personally that the history of technology is very much an act of um, figuring out how to get things done much faster in a less in a shorter period of time and much more efficiently. And so the invention of, a of the telephone is a really great example where our senses were only limited to something that could be said at least 10 feet away from us, whereas now we're able to use telephones to track to talk across the entire world. And so this is just an example of how technology can get a lot more stuff done and can really expand our senses. But one that I found to be really cool is a study that came out in about the 70s, which talked about um, animals that were able to get from point A to point B while expelling the least amount of energy. You guys may have heard um, Steve Jobs say this in a couple of his old interviews, but 
the animal that was able to get from point A to point B in the least amount of time was the condor, while human beings ended up being about a third of the way down, which could be slightly disappointing. But the researchers were smart enough to say that if we put a human on, the, on a bike, the human will be able to beat the condor out by a massive amount, which it did end up doing. So the way that I view technology personally is as a way to, or at least the way that I view computers and AI in general, is a bicycle for the mind, where we are truly expanding the ways that we are shaping the way we think, the way that we innovate, the way we come up with new ideas. And AI is something that can help us do certain things like that. So we are quite literally on the brink of an AI societal revolution, as I'm sure that most of you have experienced using uh, AI efficiency tools like ChatGPT. Um, on top of that, because we're going to be a diverse group of AI enthusiasts here at Bruin AI, we are very highly committed to actively participating in this technological revolution because we think it's so massive and it's going to affect us at humanity in general for thousands of years to come. Um, and so by understanding AI systems and by harnessing its potential, we're creating a community that's not just observing, but we're shaping the future of the AI revolution. Okay, so what is coming up for the future of Bruin AI? So we aim to create the premier multidisciplinary and dynamic AI community at UCLA aimed at shaping the AI revolution. So we wanna foster collaboration across multi multiple different clubs on both North and South campus. Um, on top of us forming technical and non-technical projects that I discussed earlier, we also plan on creating consulting services where we train consultants on how to use uh, prompt engineering to the best of their abilities, where they act as professionals who end up going out to their own clubs based on their respective major, whether it's biology, philosophy, chemistry, engineering, we train them how to use AI in the best way possible in their field where they can then go out. This can include you guys, obviously, go out and they can express to their clubs and their personal industries how AI can help them as a consultant for prompt engineering. Um, obviously, in the future, we're also going to be hosting a lot more workshops related to this, where we're going to keep you guys updated on the AI landscape because we believe that things are moving so fast. And we're also going to be creating social events where people can create friends and connections with peers and industry professionals. Okay, so moving on to um, how does AI work exactly and what are its capabilities. So um, this is not going to be a very highly technical explanation uh, because we really want to get into the applied um, concepts that are in um, that are available through AI rather than the theoretical. But just to give kind of a brief overview, we believe that. Um, the best new programming language is English. And so the way that we can understand that is that the best language for computers to understand is numbers. So obviously understanding of ones and zeros and computers over recent years have figured out how to, how to translate human language into numbers, essentially. That is the simplest way of putting it. And over time, this has been evolving at a more and more rapid rate. And so this has allowed for many different things, such as the advent of generated text, images, videos, and beyond. I'm sure you guys have seen the images that um, have been showing up so far. These are all AI created images that were used through both Mid Journey and DALI. And we're also coming up now with AI generated videos where there's now gonna be you know, commercials made that are entirely AI generated. There's gonna be, obviously people have seen generated texts where there's gonna be essays written, articles, et cetera, et cetera. And this is currently being implemented in every single industry. So we saw based off of the um, based on the data pool that everyone was taking, that there is a vast, vast amount of majors available um, for everyone in this room. It's a very, very diverse set of people. And we want to really enforce that Bruin AI can help out with everyone from every single major, because we think that AI, including things like ChatGPT, Dolly, other AI tools can really help you in whatever industry you plan on working in and whatever major that you um, participate in in general. So, Lastly, in terms of its capabilities, um, I come from the philosophical standpoint that AI acts as an efficiency multiplier. So it's in basic terms, gets a lot more done in less time. The way that, to think about ChatGPT is that it's not necessarily a system that knows more than you or is smarter than you. It just comes up with things a lot faster. So this is something that we really have to understand when we get into prompt engineering about it being able to help us solve problems just a lot faster and really to not submit ourselves to say that this thing is smarter than us somehow because it isn't. It just comes up with things at a faster rate. So now we're gonna come up to the next part of the seminar, which is prompt engineering. 
Um, this is the part where we really want to encourage uh, active participation. So we're going to have people raise hands, they're going to give suggestions, and we're going to see in real time just um, how these things are going to be, of how good these things can really get. Um, I am going to be using uh, GPT-4, and I'm also going to be using uh, different plugins. Um, we understand that not everybody has access to GPT-4 as well as the uh, plugins that are available. But what I will say is that um, we do plan on implementing, um, hopefully at some point, uh, special kind of perks that come with joining the team. So perhaps it could be the case that um, if you join the team, there are like shared passwords and shared, um, shared accounts that everyone can use for certain AI systems, including chat GPT-4 and uh, other unique AI systems that are coming out. Um, that's something to really look forward to. And also, um, if you've never heard of the plugins that are being used, the new things that are happening with GPT-4 but don't have access to it, we really want to assure you that even if these things aren't being accessed right now, within the next two, three, four years, you will have access to it and it will be free. Um, so you guys really are being able to get ahead of the curve in terms of what these things are capable of. So what is the point entirely of prompt engineering? So one of the best things that um, can come out of this is enhanced AI and behavior control. So essentially what we want to do is we want to provide very clear guidelines for the AI and what it's able to respond in order to get it to solve problems. Um, we're also allowing for a lot more customization. So we're going to be allowing the AI to suit unique requirements that we have, uh, as well as ensuring uniformity and AI behavior and accuracy that people can respond to um, based on certain contexts. Um, as well as also working within an ethical and safe um, interaction in order for it to be used effectively and so that people aren't, um, yeah, so that could be used in the safest way possible. So just to give a brief example kind of of what, um, of what prompt engineering does and just an example of what makes a good versus a bad prompt, uh, these are two images both taken from a AI tech uh, image generator called MageSpace. And you can see very clearly on the right that this is kind of a prompt that says large mansion in the jungle. This is actually what I put in the prompt and this is what showed up. And you can see it looks okay, I suppose. Um, it, it could use a lot more detail and with a lot more imagination, we can see that we can end up getting something like something on the left where you can see it's a very, very much more detailed jungle. Um, there's a massive house that looks far more detailed, far more beautiful. And the reason for that is because we were able to figure out that with the correct words and the correct methods of critical thinking, problem solving, we can end up figuring out exactly what to put in the prompt to get the exact answer that we want. So um, in terms of how to use prompt engineering, uh, the best way that I imagine thinking about it is we want to figure out a way to get from point A to point B using ChatGPT. So if you can imagine, we have a problem, we want to solve it, B is the solution. How do we use ChatGPT to efficiently get from point A to point B? And I want to reiterate again that it's not the case that ChatGPT is smarter than us, and it's not the sense that it can come up with ideas that are better. It just does it in a much faster amount of time. Um, so this means that the skill set that we're really going to need for prompt engineering is both a sense of critical thinking and problem solving skills. And these things are going to really remain crucial for people to achieve their goals in whatever they want not just in ChatGPT, but also with Bard, with MidJourney, with other uh, audio and video producers, um, and so on. So with a very structured approach, uh, this, this requires us to have an extremely structured approach that's needed when using ChatGPT in order to bridge the gap between A and B. So what we're going to move on to now is a set of prompt engineering techniques. And again, I really uh, encourage active participation here. So we're going to get some people to like raise their hand, they're gonna give their thoughts, they're gonna give some inputs, and uh, it's really gonna be exciting because I did some tests, but uh, in the end, we really don't know what the total result is, but we really want to give, the real, most important thing here really is to give a huge um, general brief understanding of the types of things that you could do with these types of AI, and what are the critical thinking and problem solving techniques that you could use to achieve your solutions. So, the first exercise that we're going to do is um, establishing something called role prompting. So role prompting, you can imagine, is the ability to give the AI a, pers a full-fledged personality to act as an assistant that specializes in absolutely anything that you want. So role prompting, for example, could be at acting as a travel advisor. 
So I'm going to say I right here, um, act as an experienced travel advisor where you can make a three-day vacation plan based on to a city with this amount of money. Um, so just really quick, I want someone or you know whoever to raise their hand and I want them to name uh, both a city as well as something that they'd be interested in doing in that city. Um, you, could, you could say it out loud, you could comment it, um, but we're going to use this and we're actually going to put this in and see kind of what it can do. Uh, Cambria? Um, how about Tokyo and um, eating food? Got it. Tokyo eating food. So let's go back. Tokyo eating food. And so I'm going to go into GPT-4 now. I've got a new chat already coming up. And so here I'm already going to start with one of the plugin examples. So I'm going to use the plugin example. Um, I'm going to use this plugin called Expedia, which is going to allow us to, um, it's going to predict the flights that we're going to need. And it's also going to show us hotel recommendations. So I'm going to do V, we're going to do um, Tokyo. And this is going to be involved with eating food. And let's just see what uh, what it can come up with. So it's generating hotel options, and then eventually it's going to give us uh, flight recommendations. Just going to keep going a little bit because I believe afterwards it's going to give um, other recommendations based on food. Got it. So um, that was really cool. So that was just kind of an example of one thing that we could do if we kind of enable the, um, if we enable ChatGPT to act as, for example, it doesn't even have to just be a travel advisor. It could be a job interviewer or um, a relationship coach or anything that you could possibly think of. And I just wanted to include these plugins because again, these are some, this is something that I believe is really, really going to improve um, the way that we live our lives in a sense that it's going to make everything more efficient from our ability to book hotels, from our ability to look for new things to do. And it's just going to change so many things in our lives that I'm really looking forward to and that we're going to be talking a lot more about in Bruin AI. So another form of prompting that I think is really cool is something called shot prompting. So this is kind of in a way of giving a shot of a bunch of suggestions or a bunch of actions that you ought to take in order to achieve a certain goal. So just as another question to the crowd, what is like a certain industry that you really, really want to work in? Um, like, let's say that you are in some sort of industry, you don't think you're getting paid enough, and you really just want to ask for a raise somehow. Um, again, we could take another hand, we could take uh, something in chat, um, where I could just copy and paste it in. Uh, Jacob? Uh, maybe consulting. Consulting, got it. So I'll create a new chat. I can get rid of the, just have default. Let's put in consulting. So 
So again, what it's doing here is it, the computer recently over, I guess even the last year, but obviously this is decades of research is the way it's able to output all of this is in very, very simple terms. We have figured out a way of how to translate human language into computer language. For human language, we can think of as English. And in terms of computer language, it's just outputs of ones and zero. Um, but this has obviously made things much, much, much easier to, um, to receive certain out intellectual outputs out of. So this is like an example of shop prompting. It's just giving out certain options for what you should do um, in terms of just getting a certain output that you want in a job, for example. Um, and the third one, this is something that is going to require a lot more participation from everyone because this is a lot of different steps. So this is called tree of thought prompting. And um, has any, I know there's a lot of data science majors in here. Um, has anyone heard of a, one second. Has anyone here, if you're in data science, heard of like a random forest classifier? Um, I know that's, that's kind of sent along a lot in class for people who are in data science or math. Um, basically, what we can think about here is tree of thought prompting is a way of you essentially want to figure out a massive task in a business, for example, um, but you want to know kind of you don't know the steps of how to get there. So what we're going to do here with what's called tree of thought prompting is we're going to give one certain prompt, which is going to generate one set of outputs. And then we're going to take one of those outputs and split it out into even more. And essentially, we're going to follow a tree or a forest of potential options for us to explore where we're eventually going to get to one certain answer that's going to be very beneficial to us. So I'm going to start. Uh, this is kind of like a business case um, and kind of start thinking about a couple things that you would want to say as we keep going here. Um, I'm going to start another new chat. Um, so this is actually going to start also by giving it a role. So we can see that we're going to have it act as a business professional. We're going to act. Um, we're going to have a task to help it with very difficult problems, and we're going to get it to acknowledge yes. Got it. And so I want everyone to think about uh, two different things. So I'm going to read it out first. Uh, as an as an expert in digital marketing, identify three potential market niches for an e-commerce business aimed at X demographic by analyzing customer search data, considering the rise of online shopping. And so we're gonna evaluate the projected growth of the retail industry and consider that you're operating in X country. So once again, um, someone could think about one, a demographic that you would want to aim at for an e-commerce business, as well as a country that you could imagine operating in. It could be from the chat, it could be someone raising their hand. Uh, Ingrid? Yes, can we try maybe Gen Z in the UK? Gen Z in the UK, perfect. So, let's move this out of the way. United Kingdom. United Kingdom, and we're gonna aim at Gen Z. Okay. So now what it's doing is we're gonna, it's gonna come up with multiple options to give us. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore these even further and then eventually come to some sort of conclusion. Got it. So the next question that we're going to go over is um, for each option, we're going to evaluate their potential by analyzing the pros and cons of each of these. So we're going to think about the implementation, uh, other forms of analysis that maybe you guys could get some input on. And we're also going to assign a probability of success for each one. So based on the prompt that we just gave and what we've been uh, reading through here, what is kind of other what is another outcome analysis that you can kind of think of that you would want to see as a result of these right here? I can give you some time to read it and come up with, uh, with an answer.
I could also just go back to um, the page here. So just think of one sort of, I guess like one sort of other outcome analysis that you would want uh, as a result of, as a result of what we're seeing here. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So we could just do forms of implementation and then we could see at least what's gonna come out through here. Um, if we could just put this in. So right here. Okay, got it. So we now have a set of both pros and cons to be used for every single type of um, demographic that we've come up with in terms of every single um, product that we might want to use in this thing. Um, now we can ana analyze these options and then go into the third prompt where it's going to get us even closer to our out to the outcome that we want. So we want to now start by deeping the thought process here. So we have to think at least of other potential scenarios that might happen as a result of the products that we're launching. Um, and then another need for maybe like the customers to understand. Um, can anybody think of like a need that may need to be understood um, in terms of uh, in terms of this prompt that we would want to use? Okay, got it, got it, got it. So we'll just come up with these right here. Um, we'll just do this. Um, we'll just do these here. Okay, cool. So the conclusion that we're coming to is we have all of this data that we're using for the AI in terms of trying to figure out the best solution to the problem. Um, initially, again, we started off with, we want to figure out the best product for e-commerce operating in a certain country. We've now figured out all of these different pros and cons based off of going deeper and deeper into, our, into a system of thought using critical analysis and critical thinking. Um, and so now what we're gonna do finally is we're gonna base all of these options and we're gonna have them be ranked to find the best solution. Okay, cool. So I guess the lesson that I really wanted to, I guess, get out of this was that if we use a system of figuring, really figuring out how to get from point A to point B using ChatGPT, 
it can give us answers that we never really expected before. And so the ideas that we originally had had in our mind, we can now bounce off with each other, figure out different things, um, get different outputs that we could have never expected. And this is drastically going to help us in every single field, whether it's business, computer science, uh, data science, analytics, uh, medicine, law, um, and so on and so on. And so now I just want to get a little bit into something that I find to be extremely, extremely cool, which is plugins. Um, again, plugins are a very new thing that have been implemented into ChatGPT recently. And this is something that um, I think is even more mind blowing than ChatGPT itself. Um, I was showing a friend this actually these plugins yesterday and his mind was his mind was so blown that he immediately um, paid for ChatGPT4 because he knew how useful it would be for him. So the first plugin that I really want to show you guys to really show um, the power of ChatGPT, and I think based on time, I'll go over two, um, but one of them is going to be Scholar AI. And so this is going to be um, what Scholar AI does essentially is it is a way for you to look up certain research papers in a very, very, very fast amount of time. So what is a, um, just for the audience, what is a research project that someone's doing right now? Is anyone doing any sort of like research projects where they're looking up, they need to look up a lot of information, they need to gather it, and they need to compile it into one area? Ingrid? Um, for my global studies class, I'm doing something on ethical food sourcing. Mm -hmm. You said whole food sourcing? Uh, ethical food sourcing. Uh, cold, cold food sourcing? Ethical. Ethical food sourcing. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. So I could, so I obviously understand that, you know, when you're researching an essay, it can be very, very hard to find the specific, um, the specific type of things that you want. Uh, in terms of like the research, it can be very, very difficult. It could take a lot of time. So this plugin, I could, for example, say, find me. Um, Got it, got it, got it. So something that I think is really cool about this is that I, I mean, as somebody who knows about researching papers as well and how long it can take to find certain, um, certain things, uh, this is an extremely, extremely useful plugin. And then obviously we could just click on this um, and the link is immediately there. It's all available to us. And we can even go further by asking like name specific ones that have keywords in it, um, like certain keywords that you would want to look for in any of these um, research papers. And this will make uh, researching, for example, much, much, much easier and uh, done in a much quicker amount of time. Uh, and the last one that I really want to show um, is Bulio. So this one is very, very, very uh, cool because it's basically a stock market predictor. So I'm, we'll put in uh, Bulio here as one of the plugins. Um, I have a lot that I've been experimenting with. Uh, is there a stock that anyone's looking at right now that they're curious about, that they're considering buying, perhaps? Aaron? NVIDIA. NVIDIA, okay. Uh, stock analysis on NVIDIA, yeah. And so what it's doing currently is it's looking through 
all of the data that Bulio has gathered from every sort of like financial institution um, and kind of all of the data that they have and they're compiling it all into your one question. Um, so this is gonna be, I mean, especially it's helpful for anybody who's big with investing obviously is that this gets all of your research done very, very, very fast. Um, and this is gonna have massive implications, not just for, not just in terms of you being able to do a much better job of predicting what stocks to buy next, but it's gonna be huge for people who are able to catch up to this first, rather than people who are still not using ChatGPT to analyze stocks and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it even gives us a chart. Um, it gives us a full set of stocks in similar industries, um, option report, opinion report, uh, prices, profitability, effectiveness, growth. Um, I'm sure this is gonna be extremely helpful for anyone who's busy con, which we know based on the um, original uh, poll that there are kind of quite a bit of busy con majors in here. Um, so I feel like this would be very useful for you guys. And yeah, so now we're gonna get into, this is gonna be pretty short, um, but this is all about industry applications that are going to be available to everybody. Um, so in terms of just industry applications, this is not just any specific field. This is every field. And this is what we want to emphasize at Bruin AI is that we really want everybody from every single major to be coming here. Um, we don't just want, uh, don't just want computer science, not just math. We want biz econ. We want English, philosophy, engineering for everyone to be able to get involved because we think the AI revolution is coming uh, for everybody and everybody really needs to get involved in order for us to make the best future possible and to create the best uh, type of AI environment here at UCLA. And then here's another thing about AI applications. So uh, specific examples here, um, AI is helping in maintaining code quality. Um, it's automating repetitive tasks and marketing and even coming up with new marketing campaigns. Um, we're creating new recommendations for streaming entertainment. This is not just for Netflix, but we, I can see very much in the future creating entirely new TV shows and scripts that are based off ChatGPT that can be done in a much faster amount of time. Um, I'm also, there's also a lot of things involving data science, analytics, et cetera, that we could use, um, that we could use uh, to maximize the potential with AI. All right, thank you so much, Jake. Um, and so that was basically just an introduction to prompt engineering and applications of AI into so many different fields. And this is what we want to do um, in the future as well. We want to sort of go into the depths of different fields and how AI can be used to um, really bring out um, the best of every field. So we want to have separate workshops for separate industries so that we can specialize and we can tell you more about different plugins, different plugins about finance, different AI applications um, about design, about finance, about business, technology. We wanna go over everything. And so I wanna go with you over what is next for doing AI. So we have a very comprehensive timeline that we're building. Um, this timeline is for the fall and um, we'll continue all over the future quarters as well but we're focusing on a very holistic view as a club um, not only do we want to do workshops which we'll keep doing which will be available to everybody who's in Bruin AI and who's not in Bruin AI we also will be there at the summer um, at the summer EAF and the fall the big enormous activities fair during the start so make sure you come by say hi um, tell us about your interests um, tell us how you're interested to join just stop by and say hi then we'll sort of launch and recruit a lot of people. We're looking to recruit a lot of very passionate individuals. If you did like um, some parts of this workshop today uh, and you felt that it can be applied to your industry, I really feel that you should apply. Um, it's it, it'll, it's going to be a very growing club at UCLA. We want to focus on growing really fast. Um, and we have passionate individuals who are making that possible. Before even getting into training and actually getting into what the club actually is, we really want to have a lot of socials. We want to have a retreat with all of uh, our new members in the club because we do think that we want to form a team out of this. It's not only that we're any other club uh, and we're only working and working. We sort of want to get closer as a community. We want to form a team. We want to stay in this for the long run. And so if that's something that, um, that matches your vibe, that matches your tone, you should definitely consider us right after the socials um, and the socials will be going throughout the next quarter. We'll be getting into intern training where we'll be training you guys, whoever joins as consultants 
we want to um, train AI consultants, we want to train technology consultants, management consultants, bring all of that together and work with different clubs at UCLA, work with different companies. And this is super applicable to the real world right now. Being an AI consultant and knowing how to leverage the power of AI really puts everyone on top of their fields. Um, after that, alongside um, while we train you as interns and we, while we onboard a lot of you guys um, onto the leadership team, we want to have AI project teams as well, where we de develop um, different projects in AI, we apply different AI applications and um, build consulting groups as well. So it's a lot of things that we're going to do and we're very excited for this. Um, I see a lot of questions popping up on how you can join and how you can apply. And that's on the next slide. Um, so first thing, first, how you said, and I'm going to emphasize this, we want you to get involved. Um, we're looking for all of you to join. And so make sure that you follow um, our Instagram page, which is Proven AI, if you don't already. Um, we're going to be making the Instagram page very interactive. We're going to have a lot of polls. The Slack channel is really, really important to join. If you want to become a part of everything that we are doing, we're going to build this sort of more like a startup instead of a club. We want to take all of your opinions. We want to take that into account, develop a community out of it, meet a lot, um, meet for dinners, meet for lunches, do go on retreats. We want to make it really fun. Um, a lot of guys on the team are um, in, um, involved in Greek life, so parties wouldn't be a problem as well. Um, and so you should um, definitely consider joining our Slack. First and foremost, you should get our email newsletter. We'll be sending out updates. We'll be sending out our application form on our email newsletter. There's going to be a special application form for the fall that comes out in the, in the coming few days. And it's what we call a pre-application form. And before we open Bruin AI to the entirety of all the freshmen that come next year to enormous activities fair, we want to give all of you guys a special chance um, to apply to Bruin AI, tell us why you're interested, what skills you bring, this is a big time commitment that we're looking into. Um, so if you're thinking um, of joining a thing where you actually learn a lot, this is the place. Um, so we want you to get involved. One last thing I want to mention is um, we want to give out a lot of similar resources um, that reading the chat section and offside as well. I'm going to answer your question, Aaron, right after this. Um, but we want to give out a lot of premium resources to you guys as well. So the prompts that we already talked about, we have so many of these prompts and we want to give you some premium prompts and how you can access that is very simple. You go on in our Instagram, you follow our Instagram, you comment three friends that you think might be interested in AI, that you that are your friends, they can be your peers, they can be your professors. All you have to do is comment the name of three people and we'll personalize prompts and send them to you over email so that you can take advantage of them. As simple as that. One last thing, on our Instagram, in the link in the bio, there's already a pre-application form attached where you can tell us that you are interested in joining. We're going to contact you, have an interview with you, get to know you better. Um, it's going to be super informal, um, but there's a link in the bio as well as we're going to send the same link over email as well. So if you're subscribed to the email newsletter, you're going to get that email as well. That's all. And that is it for us. Thank you so much. Guys, I cannot emphasize this enough. We put in our heart and soul into this. We worked so hard towards this workshop. Um, it's towards the end of the quarter. So making this possible was really hard. We reached out to, we had no idea within seven days of launch, we reached out to about hundreds of people. We have so many people on our email newsletter. It's a rapidly growing club. Our Slack community is already up to 90 people, um, which is a very, very good sign. And we're ready to take this club to the next level with you guys. Um, so thank you so much for attending this workshop. This is Bruin AI. I'm Akshay. Thank you so much, Jay. Um, we've got Jin on our side. We've got a few other teammates who are on our side. And that's it for me. Yeah, again, thanks for joining, everyone. Um, we appreciate it more than anything. Um, this really means a lot because we did put in quite a lot of effort uh, for this. And we're very excited to see where Bruin, where Bruin AI goes into the future. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we're excited to see where this goes.